If you follow our YouTube channel, you'll know that we started cruising on a 26-foot Heavenly Twins catamaran called Kitty Wake, and then we upgraded to a Tayana 37 monohull called Skua. The question everyone asks us when they meet us and find this out is why. Why did we go from a catamaran to a monohull when it seems most monohull owners secretly dream of cruising on a catamaran? We figured it's about time we answer this question. As I explain our reasoning behind our switch, please bear in mind that this is all subjective and the choice of catamaran versus monohull is very personal because it's based around a person's needs. Our comparison is based around a lightweight 26 foot catamaran from 1979 versus a heavy displacement long keel monohull from 1976 for cruising full time in non extreme conditions. So our opinions are based around these specific circumstances. The first point people make is that they think we had a big catamaran and we effectively downsized to a monohull. The reality is that Kitty Wake was 26 feet long. Even though a 26 foot catamaran is bigger than a 26 foot monohull, it is still a 26 foot boat. Bear in mind that on a catamaran you lose a lot of the length both at the bow and stern as the hulls are pointy at both ends. On a small catamaran, the cabins down below are small. The hulls are very narrow and to keep the windage to a minimum, the headroom is very low. In Kitty Wake, I could just about stand up in the galley and the bathroom, while Ryan basically couldn't stand up inside. I am 5 foot 2 and Ryan is 6 foot 3. While we had various cabins, which neatly separated the living area from the berth, the space to move around the boat and inside the cabins was very small. We personally think that a catamaran needs to be at least 35 foot long to provide enough room to live in comfortably full time on board. Kitty Wake was a perfect weekend and holiday boat for people who can live in a house standing upright for at least half a year. While sailing on Kitty Wake, we had a look at bigger blue water budget catamarans with a similar design, such as the Proud Snow Goose. Even though these catamarans are solid and can be bought for a reasonable price, we knew from living on Kitty Wake that this type of design wasn't right for us. These old school catamarans feature a low bridge deck clearance, which means the sea water will splash on the bridge deck in a slight chop at anchor or all the time while underway. This might seem a small nuisance, but hearing the constant noise day and night can be tiring, especially if you need to focus on work most days like us. Underway, the big slams created by the water hitting the bridge deck startle you and make it very difficult to sleep. Our monohull skua, on the other hand, cuts through the water beautifully when she sails, making a ride very quiet. And when we anchor somewhere, there is no splashing noise. Another big obstacle to us buying a second catamaran was the cost of buying and owning one. As a rule of thumb, catamarans are more expensive to buy and maintain than monohulls of the same size, age and condition. While we could have saved up to buy an old proud snow goose in need of work, the refit, mooring and maintenance costs would have been too high for us. Catamarans have two engines, two hulls, a bigger surface above the water and more cabins. All of these need maintenance and occasional upgrades. The bigger size also means paying more for mooring and hauling the boat out. Catamarans pay one and a half to two times the price of monohulls of the same size in most marinas and boatyards. Even though we live at Anka most of the year, we found the prospect of paying these high prices for hauling out or finding shelter in a marina for a storm, too daunting. By upgrading to a 37-foot monohull, which was a lot cheaper to purchase than a 37-foot catamaran, we essentially pay the same price as we did on Kitty Wake for mooring. Kitty Wake was 26 foot long, which meant most marinas charged us as a 39-foot monohull. Sure, we managed to negotiate the price down in various places as our beam was only 13 feet, 
However, the default attitude was always to charge us more. With a bigger, beamier catamaran, we feel confident that it would be hard to negotiate the mooring prices down. Having had a catamaran for three years, we know that the 70s and 80s designs, which were the only ones that were affordable to us, had a poor upwind performance. On Kitty Wake, we always chose to sail downwind on a beam reach. Going upwind would mean sailing at about 85 degrees. We had plans to sail the Caribbean, where sailing upwind in strong currents is essential for moving country sometimes. So we decided an old school catamaran would not be adequate for our plans. There are modern catamarans that can sail upwind fairly well these days. However, these were not in our budget. Monohulls are generally good at going upwind. Squares design isn't the most performance orientated, but we usually manage to go at about 45 degrees and sometimes even less. The heavy displacement, long keel design means that she doesn't get slowed down massively by the waves when going upwind, while Kitty Wake could sometimes be very slow at making progress against headwinds and waves, even under engine. One of the big reasons why people switch from monohull to catamaran is the rolling. Monohulls tend to move from side to side when a swell hits them on the beam, while catamarans don't, or they move in a gentler motion. So, were we crazy for opting for a monohull over a catamaran? Maybe, but a small lightweight catamaran like Kittywake, which weighed only 3 tons, was very prone to hobby horsing and splashing, as small waves could easily move her. On board Kitty Wake, you could easily feel a small dinghy wake or a slight wind chop. Unless there was very little wind, it felt like Kitty Wake was constantly moving, even in an anchorage. On the other hand, Skua is heavy at 12 tons, so she resists the water's movement a lot more. When the wind is under 25 knots and there is no side swell, she is super still and silent, making sleeping and relaxing easy. The rolling is annoying, especially at night, but it just means that we make more of an effort to move anchorage if we can. Catamarans tend to have a jerky, fast motion while sailing. This often causes a monohull sailor to feel slightly seasick on a catamaran. On a small, lightweight catamaran, this jerky movement is exaggerated. Monohulls usually have a gentler and slower motion underway. We felt that a gentler motion while rolling and healing would be better than a fast and jerky motion for us. Kitty Wake was only 3 foot and 3 inches in draft, while Skua draws 6 feet. For many, this would be enough to put them off Skua. However, we have noticed over the past 4 years that a shallow draft is really only an advantage in a handful of places or in notoriously shallow areas such as the Bahamas. Everywhere we go, we see both monohulls and catamarans anchoring in the same area of an anchorage. Even if a catamaran is very shallow, you still need to be able to swing 360 degrees without hitting another boat. And the seabed tends to lose depth quite fast in most places, so this doesn't allow for the swinging circle to be big enough. Whatever boat you choose, you need to like her looks. And we're not going to lie, we personally don't love the look of a catamaran, especially the modern, blocky designs we see around these days. This is a matter of personal taste and totally subjective. We personally prefer the classic look of Skua, a traditional cutter-rigged monohull with lots of teak trim. We love to turn around to look at Skua in the dinghy and gaze at her lines. While this may seem a shallow reason to choose a specific design, it's important to be in love with your boat as she requires so much work and money to be spent on her over the years. You may disagree with our decision, but at least now you know the reasons why we personally decided to make the switch. If you'd like to watch more videos of us sailing on both a catamaran and a monohull, go to our channel Sailing Kitty Wake and check out the difference for yourself.